I'm going to start recording now. It's just my screen, which I'm going to share in a minute. I'm trying to admit people. <laughs> okay, so let me share my screen. Entire screen. Okay, do you guys see the screen? I guess. Now, yes, beautiful. And I think I'm recording. I hope so. <laughs> uh, so, let's see. Yeah, probably we're recording as well. Okay, so it's 5.04 for me. <laughs> uh, so let's start this. So today, I'm going to be showing you how you can crea create elements such as these ones here, which are very handy when it comes to creating like a unified uh, UI in your apps. Um, and I, I think it's very, uh, very easy to maintain them afterwards. For example, if you want to change like fonts, colors, anything like that, you can do them that in one place, which is very nice. Um, first of all, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Marina. I am a bubble developer for the last five years, a full-time one. I quit my job previously. I was a quality assurance engineer. Once I discovered bubble and saw the potential, what can we do with it? I found a bubble job and then I quit my previous job, which was very, very nice. So bubble was like uh, this life-changing moment for me as I think it's life-changing for many of you guys. Okay. Um, so with this kind of mini tutorial, it doesn't matter if you're experienced with bubble or a newbie, you can still do it. Uh, Bubble is offering us to kind of create this UI components using reusable elements um, with the, I don't know if you've used them before, like the properties of a reusable, which we're going to dig in um, shortly. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating this very simple um, alert component which is like an alert icon uh see it's a reusable element um and we're going to start actually in this option set section i'm trying to admit people as i go <laughs> but okay so um first thing and i'm not going to go into details i'm sure many of you know how to create an option set uh, and add like attributes to that option set, but I'm going to walk you through the process. Uh, so I've created this alert type styles for success, warning, error, and info. Each of these types of alerts have attributes such as color, which is a hex value. It's a text value, icon, um, and this is actually optional, uh, an icon SVG. So in this case, we're going to use the SVG, which is an image. So for example, if I open the success, we have a display of success. Uh, then we have this color. And then if we download this, it's going to show an icon such as this one. Um, let's see how we can create those very, very quickly by adding a reusable element. Okay, so I'm gonna add another reusable. Let's call it alert two. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so we have this blank space here. I, for just for like convenience, the default build width, I'm going to change it to be the exact width of the alert that I want to have. Uh, in my case, it's 40 pixels. So I'm going to do this, um, I'm going to add 40, I want to have the minimum of 40, minimum 
uh, maximum width of 40 and everything else because I want it to be like this fixed width since this is like an icon. Okay, uh, one thing I want to have this aligned to parent uh, because uh, it's very convenient to kind of center the icon that we're going to use. Okay, since now we have the layout ready, uh, let's add this new property, which is going to be the type of the uh, alert. Let's call it alert type and have it be a dynamic value. And now we're going to use this option set, which we previously created. Um, it's not an optional thing. You must have at least one value. So I'm going to add it like that. Okay, so we're going to control the few things based on the type. We're going to control the background color and we're going to control the, um, the icon inside. Okay, so I'm going to add uh, roundness. Actually, let's do this like this. I'm not going to use the reusable background. I'm going to actually add a group inside. Okay, so I'm again, like this is going to be a fixed value for me since it's a very small element. Uh, it's gonna be small on mobile. It's gonna be the same size. Okay, and now I'm going to add some properties to this, let's call it G background. Okay, and again, this is going to be aligned to parents since we're going to center everything inside. And I'm going to add the background style, flat color, and luckily we can insert dynamic data here. So I'm going to use the reusable property, alert type, and I'm going to choose the color. So this will dynamically change the color of the background based on what we have, um, based on what we have selected as the property. Okay, and then I'm going to add this image in the center, which again, going to be a fixed size of let's say 24 pixels centered and now this image is going to have a dynamic value of the alert type icon svg in our case okay so now if we are going to add this alert alert two up here we have to choose a type so let's see if we choose a success alert it's going to show up here, oh yeah, we forgot the border, but it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, it's gonna look like this. Uh, so what is really handy with this, if you're using it across the app, you can add conditionals here. So for example, if you show an error message, you can set this, uh, you can change the, 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 the reusable, you can change the type, so things like that. But also you can add it to something like this, which is like a banner with more options inside. So let's see what this is actually. So as we can see here, we have this alert, which is filtered by the alert type of the banner. So the banner has alert type, which is basically the same alert type, that the same option set that we used before. But here we have more properties such as the uh, success, okay, yeah, title, <laughs> message. Let me see what I did here. Okay, yeah, we're missing a property, nice. Okay, so I've created this yesterday. <laughs> Let's add it here, dynamic value, text. And let's not make this optional since we always need this title, at least the title. So I'm going to add this here. Okay, so we have the, you can, you can basically customize this to a point where you can add as many elements as you want and then add properties for those elements. 
like for example show or hide the button you can make a condition if the property is to hide the button show button is no then the button will hide not appear so in this case we have examples here which is using like this warning message okay yeah so beautiful they don't have title let's see how that is okay so this is a success success how do you spell success like this right with one c success title this is a what is this an error message oh yeah actually this is success this is info oops things are going great and this is a warning message let's see if we're actually okay info why are the icons not showing what have i done okay What is happening? Oh my God. Are we experiencing some bubble bugs right now? I hope not. <laughs> what just happened? The type disappeared. Okay. Let's add it now. This is so weird. Uh, didn't we just have this? Anyone want to join in to discuss this? <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, so this is how you would select those properties um, and by combining like option sets with this kind of situation it's very comes in very handy also you can add for example if you choose to show the button you can add a custom link to it so um, there are like this UI elements that you have uh, that are very handy to use in your app and also you can add like animations to hide and show them. Uh, so for example, here, if we click on it, it takes us here. You can also change the behavior and you also need to change this in one place only on the reusable itself. You don't have to do it across the entire app. That's why these are very, very useful. Um, something that it's like very useful for me personally is these um, badges here, uh, which are, highly customizable so you can use them across the app you can use them to show uh, for example like user logins you can show them to uh, you can show a bunch of things um, yes definitely I'm gonna share the demo project um, and I'm also going to share another template uh, which I've created long long time ago uh, but it kind of overlaps with this uh, tutorial. Um, so what I was trying to say is like this can have many, many uh, options. So for example, you can show hide icons, you can use different types of uh, icons, you can also show initials and that it's all like controllable into one reusable element. So you don't have to update across the app. You just use this badge and kind of add several properties. Uh, so for example, the body here is the, the background and the colors are controllable based on the style. Um, one thing that I want to share with you guys, and that this is very, very handy when you have this in your app, instead of using the styles, the color styles, that bubble offers. I want to use something like uh, option sets for dark and light colors. So for example, I use, in, in this case, I use the dark color 
for let's say the text inside or if I want to show a border I would use the dark color as well and for the background I would use the light color and let's see so in this case let's go back to the index page so the properties of this badges are very easy to kind of switch between solid and outline uh, like if I want to show like a solid um, or outline, I can basically dynamically change that in the reusable. Uh, and then you would have this, which is very, very nice. I think I have some error as well. Something very weird is happening. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know what to say. I hope this doesn't happen to your apps. <laughs> Okay, there we go. So you can have this style as well. Um, but this comes very, very handy. Um, and uh, the, the colors are something that I use every day. So for example, I have my branding colors here. I have them in light or dark version, and then I can use them across the app. And if I want to change a color in the future, all I have to do is update one option set and that's it. I don't have to do like updates across the app. Um, also that it's very useful for me is creating beautiful checkboxes, which is a challenge since we're all, we, we only have this, I think it's like two that are like bubble based checkboxes, the Ionic one, which is for mobile use and the classic like HTML checkbox, which you cannot customize. You cannot style it and it's always has this weird like padding at the bottom which pushes the text and you can never align it so i want to use this one i i use so you see here this is a reusable and it has all of the properties inside that reusable which is this one like a small checkbox i can add it next to a text and then add uh different like actions to it um, so this is very, very, I mean, I'm going to share this with you so I don't have to go into any details, but it's basically a conditional space thing. It's like changing different shadows whenever you press on it, whenever you click it, select it, and whenever you like hover over it. So you can do all of this here. And you can use this checkbox across the entire app. And if you ever need to change the checkboxes looks, for example, you don't want it to be a circle. It can be a square or something else. You change it in one place only. Uh, the nice thing about reusables and is you can always detach them. So for example, if I don't want to use this style of a checkbox in one place, I can detach. I can detach a reusable element and it's going to be a unique element on my page only. It's not going to be the reusable. So that's very handy as well. Um, other thing that it's really, really great, and you can create this for different kinds of type, types of input. Um, this is very nice. For example, if you have, I don't know, like form inputs, or you have a bunch of inputs in your app, uh, so you don't have to style them one by one. If you ever need to change them, you can use this input component type, um, which doesn't have any properties. It's just a reusable element that you can grab and put it on your app. But you can also have conditionals such as that based on properties. For example, show title, yes or no. Let's add it like this yes or no let's say it's uh, it's an optional field with a default value of yes but what i can do is add a condition the to say when this component show title is no this element is not visible and it's going to collapse so things like that you can you can add that as well and these are very handy because you have this ready to go component whenever you need to kind of use the same style across the app. 
You don't have to do it all over again. You can just have this component ready to be reused the entire uh, app. This also is very helpful helpful when you're working on a, with a team. So everyone can be on the same page. Everyone can use the same style. And it's very nice to have this beautiful UI and it definitely improves the user experience across the app. To have the same elements appearing everywhere to know where everything is. So I definitely recommend you have something like this, which is very nice. Uh, so you can also do this, like have like different uh, styles for the input itself, but also show different messaging if the input is, is invalid, so things like that, which is very, very helpful, um, especially when you're working on a team. Okay, uh, one thing that really helped me uh, as a bubble developer is to have, uh, it's sort of like a, having a head, head start be, with, with the UI and not having to think, okay, I, I don't know, like uh, for this kind of app, I need to create this kind of landing page. I need this hero section and you need to create all of it from scratch. I've created this template I think it's like, I don't know, maybe a year ago. I'm not really sure. It's free. I'm going to share it with you. Uh, okay. Um, so it's free. And this is very handy because you have several kinds of hero sections. They are all um, responsive. So they look great on mobile as well. Um, and you have several kinds of footer elements. You have like pricing tiers, uh, you have testimonial cards, bunch of things that you can reuse all over and over. So imagine this when you're combining uh, what I just shared with you, having something like a reusable or option sets of colors, or option sets of types of elements, you can have this very powerful powerful bubble app that is going to be very easy to maintain. Like in terms of if you ever need to change the UI, you can just do it very quickly. Um, uh, and yeah, this is how it looks like. Actually, this is inspired by Tailwind. So for example, we have this menu here that we have this like good transitions. So the nice thing here is that if I ever need to add I frequently ask questions in any of my apps, I just copy and paste this. So um, not sure if you're aware, like you can basically copy and paste to another app. So if I ever, ever need to use this in this app, I can just, actually I could have copied, pasted there, paste it, it's going to create the reusable elements and now it's mine. As long as you are in the same browser. So if you're using like same Chrome browser uh, and you're logged in with the same account, you can do this. So that's why I created this as a template. You can add it to your own bubble account and then you can just copy and paste those elements whenever you feel like you want. Okay. So, so far, any questions? Don't be shy. Hey. Mm. Mm. I mean, uh, what do you mean like moving data between reusable elements? Oh, okay. Yeah, you need to have that on the page. Yes. Uh, so, I don't know. I haven't really 
uh, I haven't done that a lot in the app. I've maybe used it like in, in most of us, but having the reusable somewhere on the page uh, enables you to do that. Otherwise, I don't think you can. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, yes, yeah. So with the, yeah, with the properties, you can't really access it, but you can access data with state management on the reusable itself. You can have a custom state and yeah, probably that's that's the way to do, do this. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I don't think there's an option. Not sure, but I don't think there's an option. Okay. Uh, yes, I think I'm recording it. I hope, <laughs> I hope that I can share this recording with you guys. Um, let me, let me see if I can share the demo project with you guys. Um, so what do I have 19 issues on the project? Oh, I don't have Ionic icon installed. Great. But that's, I'm happy that that's a simple solution. <laughs> um, so I can probably, let me see if I can share this. Can I share it if I'm not like uh, paying for this version? Let me see if I can actually do this. Let's see. I'm trying to see if I can share this with you. Uh, share a link. Yes, I can. Development. Done. Come on, where's my link bubble? So weird. Okay. Yeah. But definitely. Okay. It's where are you guys? Okay. Right here. There we go. That's the demo product. Yeah. I think I can even add more options for you. Um, I'm just going to delete this so you don't have a bunch of unnecessary errors. Uh, but I'm also going to share the, uh, it's called decaf components. Let me see if I can do this actually. Templates. Create it. Ah, there we go. Preview template. Nope. Public page. That's it. Okay. There you go. Yes. But what I would recommend is to have something like this in your apps that it's like ready to go. It's very, it comes very handy and you're doing it once, hopefully. Uh, and it's, if your team, like bubble team grows, um, everyone would be like on the same, everyone would be on the same page and everyone would have create like unified UI across the app, which is, Great. Um, any other questions? Something that I can like explain further? Nope. Can you share some of your, your experiences that you've kind of used in the past? Anyone? That's not shy. Come on. I'm doing this for the first time in my life. <laughs> nope. Okay. Good. I'm not going to force anyone. <laughs> um, okay. So raise the hand. Okay. 
Hey, Dylan. Hey. Yes. <laughs> Probably. Oh. Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, folders, yes, maybe that's like the next, next ask. We do have folders for the pages, but we don't have folders for the reusables. I, I don't think we have that. I mean, let me check. I haven't seen it. No. Oh, we do. The page folder. There you go. So you can basically create a, a folder for your reusables. That's one way of organizing them. Another is using different kinds of emoji. Oh. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, is anyone seeing my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically this, like you open the reusable, uh, ah, this here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, with the folders for the, yeah, I, I get that. But imagine having the app without any reusables and how many elements would you have in the element tree, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that would be crazy. Yes, and also, I don't know if you've experienced this, but the bubble apps, especially when you're having something like uh, an admin page in your apps and you are not using reusable elements, that can go crazy. Like. I've been working recently on an app that it's constantly crashing, constantly, like every 15 minutes, it's just crashing. So what we did is we kind of refactored the page by adding reusable elements because in the editor, they're considered as one element instead of whatever that reusable holds. Yes, 
and yeah yeah oh oh yeah yeah so definitely having as many reusable elements as possible in your apps will speed up the editor definitely yes awesome awesome yeah uh did i share template and the the app i don't know if i can add them uh, yeah uh, Mm -hmm. oh yeah that's only with an invitation but i don't think i can invite you to no Mm -hmm. uh, I can ask her only view as an only view edition. Yeah, you can copy and paste as long as you're in the same like browser, you can copy and paste the elements, even with the workflows. So, for example, if I, oh, okay, yes, you are actually right. Um, how do I do that? Anyone knows? I haven't done that. Published like a version. Is it just sharing the link here? Like this? Can anyone try and open this? like a view version? No. Sorry? Ah, everyone can view. There you go. Yes. Yes. There you go. There's the link in the chat. Already did it. Okay. Of course. See, I've used the private app feature and the <laughs> username and password, but never published. Yes, there you all are. Nice. Okay, cool. Glad that we figured it out. <laughs> I wish I shared the index link. There we go. Okay, awesome. Okay, so uh, anyone else? would like to ask questions regarding bubble UI, bubble front end, bubble back end, whatever I can help. Okay, nice, nice to see you all here. <laughs> okay, now no one is listening to me. You're just copying and pasting the elements. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to stop presenting now. I think we can wrap it up. I hope everyone learned something new. <laughs> if not new, I hope I shared and made your bubble dev lives easier <laughs> by, by doing this. And yeah, if you have any questions, you can actually reach out out on Twitter. I think my DMs are open, but I'm not really sure, but I can follow you back. So definitely my DMs will be open. Uh, the recording, I think Kelly will share like a Google Drive with all of you guys. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you all. <laughs> okay. See you on social. <laughs>